us uh, listen at lunch and learn about uh, our overdose in, in our community. We all know this is an extremely important topic and something that is uh, unfortunately plaguing our community. But Pulaski County, the town of Pulaski County of Dublin, our community uh, makes extremely great efforts to combat this problem. What's important really for us to be here today, the important part of it is, is we're going to hear from the families that have been impacted by the, the opioid epidemic and overdoses um, and you use these tragedies to hopefully have triumphs to help people overcome these uh, addictions in our community. Uh, my name is Christopher Riggs. Um, I am a person in long-term recovery. Um, sorry, I was a participant in Pulaski County Drug Court. Um, the program did very well for me. It gave me the foundation to build my present future as I speak. Um, a little bit about my history. I suffered from substance use disorder and mental health for around 20 years. Um, but most of all, my substance use stole my identity, my dignity, and my self-worth. Those were the hardest to get back. Uh, but the most change in life experience came October 18th of 2021 with the birth of my first daughter. The overwhelming rush of emotions when she held my finger in that nursery cannot be explained. The best part was I was present for that. Mm -hmm. I, was, I was clean, I was sober, I felt the rush of emotion, the tears down my face, something that I could never feel while I was in active addiction. I'm able to provide for my family. I'm able to um, have some money in my savings account. Um, I'm able to pay my bills. Uh, sobriety gave me that. Drug court gave me that. Um, my loved ones gave me that. They give me the desire, the strength, the encouragement to do the next best thing. Um, sobriety has taught me that I can be loved. So earlier, just a little while ago, I said substance use stole my identity, my dignity, and my self-worth. I worked really hard to look in the mirror and tell myself that I love you. So um, loving the person who I am today is due to my recovery, my sobriety. I couldn't imagine raising her in active addiction. That's the greatest gift of all that I can be there when she needs me, when she wakes up and she looks at me and she smiles. Um, that just, it melts my heart every day. And it don't get old, it gets stronger and deeper as the time goes by. Sobriety also gives me a choice. I have a choice to, to do with my family, my loved ones, or to, I have a choice to, to get up and go to work. I have a choice, everything has a choice. And sobriety has taught me to always make the best choice that I possibly can. I am the face of addiction. I am recovery. Now I can truly say that I love the man I've become, the father I want to be, and how far that I've came. I didn't want to be a statistic of, you know, a, a failure of statistic, so I basically wanted to succeed. There's not too many things that succeeded in my life, but I wanted to be able to succeed at being clean, being a present father. Um, so thank you all so much for having me. Uh, I hope I shared a little bit of my story, and uh, I look forward to seeing you all in the future. Thank you. I am Kathy Boyers, and I lost my son to an overdose, September the 4th of last year. God bless you, ma'am. And until he got 35 and saw that there was a real world out there, he struggled. And not only with drugs, but with the friends that he thought were his friends. Frank was such a caring, loving, giving young man that a lot of people took advantage of him and he wasn't strong enough to say no. And I don't want another family to have to go through what I'm going through now. We had just celebrated his 35th birthday. 
And two weeks later, he was gone. He was the kind of kid that we talked about everything. And some things a mom just, just doesn't want to hear. <laughs> but you listen because that's your child. But I'm glad that he had other people to talk to. Leroy was his big mentor. And I thank Drug Court for giving him a second chance. We had planned a Labor Day cookout. He set up with my uncle till two, and I came back downstairs and said, okay, son, two o'clock, time for lights out. Because they were getting louder and louder. And it was just two people. And I said, it's not good night, it's good morning. <laughs> two o'clock in the morning. And he said, okay, mama, good night. Mama, good morning. And he kissed me on the forehead. And I went in his room at 9.20, like normal. I messed with him early in the morning because we're not no morning people. And I went for the doorknob and I had this weird feeling. And when I opened it, he was gone. But somebody in his circle gave him something that he wasn't supposed to have. And my son is gone. It's not fair to me. It's not fair to his children, who are four and nine, that they have to be raised without their dad. But he was mama's boy. He always has been mama's boy. And somebody gave him something that took him away from me. And I will do whatever possible to make sure that this never happens to anybody else. Because it's just not fair to anyone. And when I go to that grave site, this has been the roughest year of my life. When I go to that grave site and I have to leave, you know, you just don't know that feeling. And I wouldn't wish it on anybody. And if this can help anybody say no, or not take anything from anybody, then I'll do my part. And he's up there smiling at me for doing this. He might have acted frank sometimes, <laughs> but he took it serious. And he knew that you, you all were in his best interest. And I really appreciate it. And I thank you so much. And if there's anything I can ever do, please let me know. Thank you so much. I told you she was a wonderful, strong woman. Jeremiah Robinson, Leroy's uh, son of one of his three children. And Leroy would always emphasize this to me. I'm so glad to have my family restored. That's part of it. My family is restored my children to have a relationship with them. So without further ado, uh, Leroy's firstborn, Mr. Jeremiah, is going to come up here and share a few words with you. My name is Jeremiah. There was a time where I know my dad, he was a little reckless, to say the least. He ended up being in a high-speed car chase with that little six month child in the back seat. Um, we would start going to see my dad and we would see him, we wouldn't see him like behind the glass, we would see him through a screen. Until eventually, this nice lady, she bailed him out and gave him a place to stay. And I think he started doing drug right at this time. And we had our first visitation. But we went to Walmart. And I think that was probably the best day of my life. So my dad, me and him, we sat there, we chatted, we laughed, and <laughs> just told him like what had been happening. And it was time for me to leave. And the last thing he said to me was, don't look back. 
So as I was walking out with my mom, and I looked back, and I saw my dad sitting in this chair, crying. And it brought me to tears. I couldn't, I didn't know why he was crying. All I was that he was sad, and it destroyed me. And then, fast forward, <laughs> my dad lives in the house that he lives in today. He was doing good, working with the drug court, getting some money. Then as things went on, eventually, my dad started to open up. Because I knew the man my dad was, and who he was, and who he is, for two very, very different things. And now, and now he's trying to get me to college. And thank you for your time. I'm so proud of you, Jeremiah, and uh, how you represent your family and the love that you have for your father and for Leroy, the love that you have for your children. As said, we have some closing remarks from someone who deals in quite a, a bit of tragedy in her line of work, and that's our town police chief, Jill Hicks. Um, you're right, we've seen a lot of tragedy, and unfortunately, we only see it through one lens sometimes. So it's good to hear from other perspectives, uh, what we might be missing. And clearly addiction is a multifaceted problem. And clearly we have that here in our community. Can't be solved by law enforcement alone, can't be solved by the courts alone, or the mental health system, or, or drug court alone, or the clergy, or family. It's a community problem. And I think we have to approach it with a community effort. Because we have seen a lot. I'm not sure how to fix it. And I hope this is the first of many conversations that we can have with people. Thank you.